To the grown-ups, your car is now your office, stage, nursery. Shh, sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal, and it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person, like this. Your Erie agent in Spencer is the Ashley Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 304-927-2175. Erie Insurance. This message comes to you courtesy of Brandon Dental Associates, conveniently located on Hospital Drive in Spencer, West Virginia. I recently did some investigative shopping at three local stores in Spencer and found brand name toothbrushes and fluoride toothpaste for a dollar each and dental floss for a dollar twenty-five. That's three dollars and twenty-five cents for products that will provide multiple uses toward daily home preventive dental care. That's just pennies a day to brush twice a day and floss once a day. Compared to the current prices of soda pop and energy drinks and coffee drinks, these items are incredibly affordable. Brushing twice a day with a fluoride toothpaste, flossing once a day, and visiting your dentist twice a year can provide a lifetime of good dental health. Phone Brandon Dental at 304-927-2775 for your family's professional dental care. That's Brandon Dental. 304-927-2775. Calhoun Banks is your hometown bank. We've been serving Calhoun and the surrounding areas for over 120 years. We offer many financial and banking services, including commercial, online and mobile banking, mobile wallet, our annual deals on wheels loan sale, home and construction loans, and we specialize in land-only loans. With offices in Grantsville, Arnoldsburg, Elizabeth, and Glenville, we are ready to serve the needs of all of our communities. Stop in and see us at one of our four locations today. Visit our website at CalhounBanks.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CalhounBanksWV. Lobby hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Friday lobby hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturdays, our drive through is open 8.30 a.m. to noon. Equal Opportunity Lender, member FDIC. Carpenter's General Store in Spencer has been saving you money and giving you the best selection in Rome County since 1996. We have an amazing selection of domestic, import, and craft beers, ciders, and wines at the absolute lowest prices anywhere. And if we don't have it, we'll get it for you. We have a sporting goods section with all the right fishing gear, locally crafted lures, and live bait. And we also carry a great selection of firearms and ammunition. And once again, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you with the lowest prices guaranteed. We're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come see us at 746 Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. It's a convenience store with a whole lot more. Spencer Cash Saver is excited to announce that we are now accepting EBT payments through our online grocery site. Go to shop.spencercashsaver.com, schedule a convenient pickup time, fill your cart, then let us do the shopping for you. Give us a call when you arrive, and we'll bring your order right out to your vehicle. The $4.95 pickup fee is waived on orders over $100. So save time and shop online at shop.spencercashsaver.com. Stop by D&D Motors for great deals on used cars. We have an incredibly diverse and continuously growing inventory to choose from with many makes and models at price points that anyone can afford. D&D Service Department also offers oil changes, tire rotations, and other maintenance on your new purchase. Call D&D for your next service appointment. D&D Motors, located at 276 East Main Street in Spencer. Stop in and see Dan or Donna for your super deal today. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon, and closed on Sunday. D&D Motors, call 304-519-2157. Rome County Family Health Care now has flu vaccinations available. People considered high risk for contracting the influenza virus include infants and children, pregnant women, seniors, people with disabilities or certain health conditions, and those who travel. The CDC recommends everyone six months of age and older should receive the vaccine annually. Ask your health care provider for one at your next scheduled visit or stop in anytime. No appointment necessary. Conveniently located behind Walmart, Hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. 
Rome County Family Healthcare, promoting health and wellness for the whole family. Visit the Garden Fresh Market in downtown Spencer. We stock fresh produce arriving daily. Let us create meat and cheese trays or veggie and fruit trays for your next event. Our kitchen is open daily, eat in or carry out, Monday through Saturday, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner with daily specials available. We also sell fresh flower arrangements at Taylor's Floral. The Garden Fresh Market. Give us a call at 304-927-5109 or stop in and see us at 229 Ripley Road in downtown Spencer. And let's go Raiders. Looking for someone to move dirt for your next project? Call Halls Excavating at 304-377-3372. We do commercial and residential excavating, so no job is too big or too small. We are a licensed contractor with years of experience. Call us at 304-377-3372. Halls Excavating. We dig West Virginia. Did you know Hardman's is now stocking Trex decking? That's right. You don't have to worry with staining your deck anymore with Trex Decking. We have three colors in stock to choose from, so you can buy it today and install it tomorrow. Ask about special financing options and enjoy your new deck all summer long. Looking to beat the heat and upgrade the inside of your home this summer? Call Rachel and Ripley or Tracy and Spencer about new carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl flooring. Many of these options are in stock and ready for you to take home today. Maybe you want to give your walls their best look? Come in and pick out your new favorite color or have us color match to the one you just can't live without. Our best look paint and primer in one is your only choice for superior quality at an affordable price. Hardman's, our family serving yours since 1907. Although fall weather is beautiful here in West Virginia, falling leaves and brush piling up can turn your property ugly in a hurry. That's when you call on the pros at Hildreth Supply on Arnoldsburg Road. Hildreth Supply has a large inventory of Husqvarna chainsaws and Shindawa leaf blowers to tackle your toughest yard work. Visit us on the web at hildrethsupply.com, check out our Facebook page at Hildreth Oilfield Supply, or stop by and see us at the store located on Route 33 in Spencer. Hildreth Supply, a hometown store with hometown ownership and proud supporter of all Roan County athletes. Hi, this is Lisa Simmons inviting you to shop local and come see me at our fully stocked warehouse on the Spreads floor. We're located at 373 East Main Street, Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. At Honest Spread, you'll find the latest trends in floor covering. Carpet, vinyl, tile, hardwood, and the very popular luxury vinyl floor. We install everything we sell with the best customer service in town. Financing available, so call me today at 304-927-8082 or check us out on the web. Take a small drive to Big Savings. <laughs> New. New, new! At Jack Darren Ford, new work trucks available with Redding Classic 2 detachable service bodies. The highest quality service body in the industry. Check them out today. Jack Darren Ford's New Year's sale is going on now, too, with super savings on quality used cars and trucks, and now accepting special orders for new Ford vehicles. Don't miss out. Visit Jack Darren Ford, Ripley Road Spencer, today. Hey, are you serious? I like a good laugh. I beg you do too. Which is why I say, if all those insurance companies want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads, go right ahead. As long as it's not my money that's paying for it. Here's how you get seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance. Go to Erie Insurance. With Erie, a great price is just the start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products like Erie Rate Lock. You hear that? Rate Lock. Name says it all. For car insurance, it can't be beat. But hey, don't just take it from me. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with them year after year after year. Seriously. Your Erie Insurance Agent in Spencer is the Kirby Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 927-2544. That's 927-2544 or visit kirbyinsurance.com. Hungry? There's only one place to go to satisfy a hunger that big any time of the day or night. McDonald's in Spencer. Choose from the famous Big Mac 
quarter pounder with cheese, add fries and sweet tea, and you've got a meal that can't be beat. Start your day off right with the best breakfast in town. McDonald's and Spencer, Egg McMuffin, Sausage Egg and Cheese Biscuit, Hot Cakes, Sausage Burrito, add a cup of premium coffee and a hash brown, great prices every day. McDonald's and Spencer, I'm loving it and so will you. McIntosh Hardware Furniture and Appliance, the store that has it all. From quality furniture, Lazy Boy, Serta, Catnapper, Appliances, Maytag, Whirlpool, Amana, KitchenAid. And Macintosh offers setup and removal. Power equipment, Echo, Troy Built, and in-house service. Hardware, tools, paint, plumbing, electrical, pipes, and fittings. Macintosh Hardware and Appliance, 204 Market Street in Spencer. 304-927-2700. Find us on Facebook for more great deals. For the next few seconds, picture yourself retired. What do you see? What sounds do you hear? How do you feel? However you picture your retirement, planning early is the best way to make it happen. And State Farm Agent Norman L. Daniels is here in Spencer to help. He can chat with you about the kind of retirement that you want and then help you find the best ways to save for it. A little today can add up to a lot tomorrow. So get started now. Call State Farm Agent Norman L. Daniels and Spencer at 304-927-5680 and picture yourself happy. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Envy Graphics has proudly been serving Roan and surrounding counties since 2013. We are located on Williams Drive in downtown Spencer, West Virginia. We offer screen printing, embroidery, custom apparel, team uniforms, signs, banners, trophies, and awards. Does your school, team, or league need help with fundraiser ideas? Then give us a call, 304-927-6466. That's our specialty, NV Graphics, open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Close for lunch daily from noon to 1. Supporting local small businesses help directly support your kids in the community. Give NV Graphics an opportunity to earn your business. Thank you. Rome County Lady Raider basketball is on the air. Stay tuned for all the exciting play-by-play -play action coming up next. Rome County High School Lady Raider basketball is brought to you by these supporting sponsors. Roan General Hospital, McIntosh Hardware Furniture and Appliance, Jack Garrett Ford, Ashley Insurance, Old Fences Realty, Stats Pharmacy, Honest Fred's Flooring, NV Graphics, Slate Auto and Transmission, D&D Motors, Pilter Supply, Family Health Care, Norman L. Daniel State Farm, Hardman Supply, Garden Fresh Market, Carpenter's General Store, Poca Valley Bank, Spencer McDonald's, Spencer Cash Taver, Brandon Dental, DW Excavating, Richards Lawn and Garden, Kirby Insurance, Paul's Excavating, and sponsoring the Player of the Game Award, Willard C. Starcher Auto Parts. And now we take you courtside. Here's your Raider broadcast crew, Andrew Miller and Matt White. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to WVRC 104.7 FM's live streaming coverage of Lady Raider basketball action. We welcome you from Jackson County, West Virginia, inside the ladies' facility here at Ravenswood High School, home of the Devilettes, as we prepare for the LKC Conference placement game for seventh and eighth place. Rome County coming in with an overall record of 14 and seven, but they are eight and three in the LKC East Division. That highlights just how difficult the East has been this year with just three losses on the East, Rome County playing for seventh and eighth place. Obviously, Webster County and Gilmer County at the top of our side. Doddridge just beating out Roan County as well. On the opposite side, the Ravenswood Devilettes come in with a record of 11 and six overall, just four and four in the LKC West Conference. That is a brutal division as well with Parkersburg Catholic, the defending state champions, Williamstown and St. Mary's, all three at the top of the Western Division. This is a rematch of a game held just about a week and a half ago. Rome County uh, and Ravenswood at the Castle. That was a great battle between the two programs. Rome County had a two-point lead with three minutes and 19 seconds left in the game. 
At that point, Faith Mason, the leading scorer, fouled out for Roan County, and the wheels fell off at the end. The final score in that game, Ravenswood victorious 56 to 47. The Lady Raiders would like to exact a little bit of revenge on the road here tonight. Lady Raiders averaging 56 and a half points per game, 47 and a half for Ravenswood. Roan County's defense has been the name of the game all year, even when the offense wasn't going. 38.5 points per game given up by Roan County. Ravenswood gives up 46 on the dots. Glad you could join us on our YouTube live streaming coverage of Lady Raider basketball action. My name is Andrew Miller alongside Matt White. Katie Nutter is our camera person here tonight, and we are high above the court here at Ravenswood High School. Well, Matt, we know what happened just a week ago at the castle. It was Roan County and Ravenswood in a dog fight, a great game, but Roan County had it kind of marred by that last 319 where they kind of just fell apart and Ravenswood able to get the big victory. Well, part of that was uh, even throughout the game, Drew, foul foul trouble begins to mount up. I mean, the way this defense of Roan County plays, it's nonstop, constant pressure. You're always trying to, you know, swipe at the ball or get, you know, a jump ball. 56 points on the board. 30 of those came from the free throw line, and 16 of them from Hadley Magoski, who just this week surpassed that 1,000-point mark in her career. So, yeah, that's a big accomplishment, a big congratulations to that young lady, but can't put her on the line. Girl can shoot. She had 31 against Roan County and 16 of them from the free throw line. It's kind of a carbon copy of how when we play Charleston Catholic, you, you get too many fouls down the stretch. You know, you, you let them hang around in a game that Roan County should be able to win. Uh, there's no um, – no legitimate reason that Roan County can't compete, but we just can't get over that hump. It's been a issue in the past. A great season, nonetheless. I mean, you're talking three losses in conference. Normally, you would take that, but it's been such a uh, – the LKC is just brutal. Uh, there's so many talented teams. Three losses in conference, and you find yourself playing seventh and eighth. That doesn't happen. I mean, it's, it's just tough, but you got to contain Mogoski. Roan County had a great opportunity in that last battle. We had um, Ratchford fouling out late, and then uh, was it was it Mosser that ended up uh, sitting the majority of the game with an injury. That's two starters out for a team that only suits up eight. You know, you, you got to be able to take advantage of that if you're Roan County. Just continue to do what you do throughout the throughout the 95 percent of the ball game. You know, let your defense dictate what you're doing, and make sure and play within yourself. When you get down to those last few minutes of a game, you know, just uh, yeah, a little bit better with uh, situational awareness. Uh, you know, times when you, you know, you're not forced, you don't have to shoot the ball. You know, you've got seven minutes left in a ball game, or, or you got a couple minutes left in a ball game and a seven point lead. You know, there's no shot clock. You know, just keep working the ball around, run your offense, try to get something going to the basket. That's when Run County's done very well, is getting into the middle of the floor. It makes things so much easier and it opens up the space for your outside shooting. You know, and, and defensively, um, we'll see what the matchup is. You know, Brown County go with, a, you know, the, the man that they've been going through. I think they start with that, we'll see how it goes. If uh, things start going awry with Magoski or Ratchford, you know, maybe switch it up a little bit. But, yeah, I think, uh, I think you just come out here, play tough, put some pressure on those guards and try to get out and run and get some easy buckets early. Yeah, obviously, you've got to get uh, uh, body on body on the boards. Uh, Roan County needs to own the boards inside. Specifically, when Ravenswood does miss, I think defensive rebounding will be a major issue here tonight as Roan County needs to be good there. Again, last game, you played without the services of Macy Mosser after the first quarter, and Ratchford fouled out early in the fourth, and Roan County was unable to make do with that. But again, all roads run through uh, Hadley Magoski, who can really make shots happen. She can get herself into positions to get to where she wants to be. It's why she averages 22.2 a game. But you've got very good guard play here with uh, Magoski, Ratchford, Mosser, Maxson. They're all very good, talented guards for Ravenswood. Getting set to go here between Roan County and Ravenswood. The seventh place king in the Little Canal Conference. We'll take a break for our sponsors when we return. Starting lineups and the opening tip from Ravenswood High School. You're watching Lady Raider Basketball on WVRC. Sports builds character, character that follows us all through life. 
It can lift us up in grand emotions when we reach the pinnacle of success. We all can envision the agony of defeat. Both equally build character. Old Fences Realty believes in character. Working hard to achieve that pinnacle of success takes sacrifice, training, and long hours. When putting your property on the market, please remember the company that possesses that character. List with Old Fences Realty. And go team. Your bank shouldn't make you feel like you're on an assembly line. It's about you, your family, your future. That's why you're going to feel good about Polka Valley Bank. Because people have been feeling good about us for over 100 years. Bottom line, we have all the services of a big bank, but we're local. At Polka Valley Bank, our decision-making is local. Our people get to know you and call you by name. It's a relationship with a bank that you can feel good about. See us online at polkavalleybank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. We welcome you back inside the facility here at Ravenswood High School, Rome County and Ravenswood set to go. LKC placement game for seventh place in the conference. I tell you what, this may be one of the best pair of teams battling for seventh place in a conference that I may have ever seen. Just an intense LKC this year as it is year in and year out. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both of these teams. First off for Ravenswood and head coach Kara Williams. First off. 5'4", junior guard Hadley McGoskey, the 5'4", junior guard Emily Ratchford, the 5'5", junior guard Macy Mosser, 5'4", senior guard Samantha Maxson, and the 5'4", senior guard Evelyn Yeager. Two and double figures for Ravenswood, led by McGoskey, 10.1 points per game for Ratchford, and the rest of the guards really are uh, not offensive great weapons, but they are on the boards, most of them average near five or six rebounds per game. Most of them average two to three steals per game as well. This team, by the way, Ravenswood turns the ball over only 10 times per game. They dish out 11.4 assists per game, and they steal the ball at 14 a clip. And that is why they are as good as they are. For Rome County, same starting lineup. We get Maddie Hall back after that second half scare against Charleston Catholic where she did not play. The five foot six senior guard averaging 10.3 points, 4.9 rebounds, 3.6 steals, and 2.7 assists per game. Faith Mason, the six foot senior guard, averaging almost 20, 19.9 points, 8.3 rebounds, three and a half steals and two and a half assists per game. Cameron starts with a five foot seven senior three guard, the sharp shooter averaging eight and a half points, 3.4 rebounds per contest. Paige Mealy has come on strong as a senior, the five foot five guard averaging 5.5 points per game. She leads the team with 33 made three pointers. And Sammy Kaiser, the five nine junior forward, averaging 4.2 points and five rebounds per game. Roan County averages 14.1 turnovers per game, 12.7 steals, and they dish out 11.4 assists per contest. We are ready to go to work here in the LKC placement game for seventh place. I can scarcely believe to say that because both of these teams are good enough this year to be playing for a night of champion spot had it not been for three teams on both sides that were unbelievable. In the center circle, Faith Mason for Roan County and Emily Ratchford for Ravenswood. Opening tip, blasted into the front court, taken by Maddie Hall quickly to the left block. Now Roan County will back up and set up the offense. Neely right wing gets a high screen by Kaiser out top. Here's a three for Mason. That one rims outside. Rebound tipped out into the hands of Magoski. Mason, who really isn't much of a three-point shooter, has really come on in the last half of the season. She's got 22 second on the team. Yeah, her specialty has always been more of those mid-range foul line type jumpers. You see Cameron Starcher getting a hold of that one on a blocked shot. Just a piece of it, out of bounds to the Devilettes. I have had many, many issues throughout the last five years trying to remember to call them the Devilettes. I'm just so used to Red Devils. Maxson on the right wing. 
Ratchford loses the dribble, stolen by Kaiser. Sammy into the front court. Picks up the dribble, needs a guard. There is Hall. Inside to Sarcher on the right block. Muscles it up, misses short though. A good look by Hall inside. Rebound cleared by Jaeger. Aron County will go back to standard man-to-man -man defense. Into the corner, here's Maxson. 15-foot jumper missed, rebound into Kaiser's hand, and she brought it down to the hip mat. As soon as that happened, it was swiped away by Ratchford. The layup is good. First points of the night for either team. That was just quick hands by Ratchford just to strip that thing away. Now Mason not, attacks. I'm not 100% sure that Kaiser ever fully had control of that ball before it was ripped away. A strong move to the rim by Faith, falling sideways. Laid it softly off the glass. Nearly two minutes gone by in this Little Canal Conference seventh place matchup. Now Ratchford leads this team in assists. She and Magoski both have great handles with the basketball. Magoski guarded by Hall. And back into the hands of Ratchford. She'll look to attack right side, get a little bump, no call. Layup misses off the rim. Rebound underneath for Mason. And a foul will be whistled on Maxson. First foul on Maxson. First foul on the team. We'll see a little bit of backcourt pressure now for the Devilettes. It's a little bit of zone. They're going over the top. They did. Wide open to the lane is Hall. Good look for Faith Mason. Assist Mason finished by Maddie. Yeah, normally I'm not a big fan of trying to go over the top of a press, but that was a beautifully run play. Went back cut that time by Ratchford. Almost fell out of bounds. Saves it in over to Samantha Maxson. 15-footer on the left wing drops in. Mason rifles it over the midcourt line. That one's stolen. Into the corner. Here's the first opportunity for three. That one way strong by Magoski. Hall clears it into the front court. Starcher up with the layup. Misses, gets her own rebound, and puts it back in midair. Smart move by the senior. Good job. Just get that rebound back up quickly. Don't even give yourself time to come back down and reset. Nice, sir. Nice play there. Tip in Cam Starcher. One of the Devilettes right now rolling off a lot of screens, cutting the person off the screen straight down the lane, left and right side. They're looking to get to the basket. Ratchford throws it wildly underneath, not sure who she was looking for. Mason steals it, Faith, all the way to the rim, and she'll go crashing down into the wall as a reach-in foul is going to be whistled. That's going to be Macy Mosser on the foul. Always hate when you get the jersey switches from home and away. A lot of these girls wearing a different number than what we saw just a couple weeks ago. Well, that first miss for Mason, that alludes us to the game a couple nights ago. She is a career 76% three-point shoot or free throw shooter. And this year she's been hovering 80, 81%. She was 11 of 19 in that Charleston Catholic loss. Very rare for her. Magoski driving baseline right, misses the layup. Rebound cleared. Here comes Starcher. All the way to the right side. Lays it up off the rim. No good. And Hall over the back. Maddie knew it. You could see just as soon as she made contact with Mosser, who had the positioning, the foul coming. First team foul on the Lady Raiders. Four minutes. Ten seconds left. First quarter action. 7-4 Roan County. Now comes Bogoski, throws up the runner, banks it in from 15 feet. And Bogoski over 1,000 points for her career on Monday. Here's Faith Mason attacking from 14 feet, no good. Long rebound, tipped three or four times, and Sammy Kaiser comes down with it. Rome County remains in possession. Now Hall going to be called for shuffling the feet.
So a turnover for the Lady Raiders. It's one of those where your body knows where it wants to go before you can get your brain to put that ball on the floor. I know that all too often. My brain is quite slow. Screen out top for Ratchford. She'll hand it off to Mosser. There's one dumped into Magoski, but that was thrown at Hadley's feet, and that one kicked out of bounds. Turnover back to Roan County. Yeah, normally a bounce pass is the safe one to make, but when you're in that tight of quarters, that's tough. You kind of got to hand that one off. Roan County breaks the soft pressure. Now work to Hall on the left wing. Mason cutting through. Now comes out to give a screen for Maddie. Hall to the lane and had trouble getting that one up as Ratchford reaching in. And Maddie will be at the line for two. Three-minute mark here of the first quarter. Again, Ratchford fell out at uh, Rome County a week ago in the early portion of the fourth quarter. That was just her first, team's third. Paul gets the first one to roll around and drop. And swishes the second two of two for Maddie. From County back in front by three at the three minute mark here in the first period of action. Final, final game of the regular season. Actually, one more for Roan County. It looks like we got Work County on the schedule. Nope, that is. That will be in the sectional tournament. I apologize. So this is the final regular season game for Roan County. Foul whistle on Cameron Starcher and Ratchford at the line for two. I know Ravenswood, they're going with Ratchford running the point with Faith Mason trying to guard. It's a tough assignment. I mean, Faith is very long and very athletic, but Ratchford such good handles and so quick with the basketball in her hands. That time, she got right down the center of the lane. One of two in Roe County, throws it away. Turnover into the front court, Magoski bodied up. Wow, geez. Got away with one there, did Roan County. Mason, let's hope Roan County can make it work there. Now Mason has a block from behind. Good defensive recovery. Magoski wide open underneath and a foul and a layup. That's one of the ones you would prefer immediately just to peel off of, Matt, because Ratchford or not Ratchford, sorry, Magoski already had positioning for the lane. And you just add a uh, an opportunity for an 83% free throw shooter. And Magoski makes good. And the lead back in front for the Devilettes now. That was pretty much the only outcome of that one was the shot was going to fall. Yeah, like I said, got to peel off of that one. Beautiful dish inside by Kaiser Hall. Misses on the left-handed layup, though. Rebound controlled by the Devilettes. Ratchford quickly front court. Mosser, corner right, picks up the dribble. Out top, boy, Mason almost stole it, knocks it into Roan County's bench. Substitution for the Devilettes. Hager checking out in for the first time. The 5'10 junior, Brooklyn Adams, really the only size that this team has. Yeah, it's a very guard-heavy team is Ravenswood. See what kind of impact if Adams can make on the inside. Well, Mosser put the brakes on and slid that back foot. Good defense by Starcher. Yeah, cut off the driving lane. And then on the turn and try to pivot and throw back out, there was nowhere to go. Just had to slide that foot just to keep the balance. Two minute mark, first quarter of play here from Ravenswood High School. This is the seventh place game in the LKC Conference. Again, both these teams really good. Here's Hall. Baseline right, misses the 15-footer wide open, though, is Faith Mason for the rebound and the putback. Nagoski wants to move quickly, and there is Miss Deflection herself, Maddie Hall. Had a good recovery. Thought Nagoski might have an angle. That over-the-top pass. Hall cut it off very well with the feet first, then the deflection. Nagoski dribbling around, gets to the baseline, gets under the basket. And for Matty Hall, you got to lay off there because McGoskey was behind the backboard. Yeah, there was no angle at all for that one. This will be two fouls on Matty. And again, that will send McGoskey back to the line. She is potent from the line coming into this ballgame this year, Matt. 
81 of 98, 83% free throw shooter. And again, she had plenty against us. Yeah, I'm not sure what her percentage was in that one, but she did connect to 116. Gets both. The lead seesaws back in the Devilettes' favor. Front court, Mason looking to drive left side of lane, splits a defender and bodied up. Now, that's not going to be on the one that tried to take the charge. I believe Ratchford's going to pick up the foul. Yeah. That's going to be Ratchford with a reach before the player control foul. Somebody behind us extremely incensed by that. Said, I'll come down and knock you over. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. It wouldn't matter as long as somebody reached in first. Yeah, 23 <laughs> on the foul. That's the second on Ratchford. They'll call it on the drive. I think that's the correct call. And Atali checking in for... Roan County replacing Hall at the 132 mark here in the first quarter. Inbounds Mason, left wing three, hits it short. And on the backside, the 5'10", Junior Adams clears. Now Magoski working against the freshman, Tolly. Well, we've talked about how remarkable Tolly's rise as a freshman has been. She is not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best scorers. That time, though, Magoski wins the battle. Just got the step on Anna and took it strong. Yeah, and a great on-ball defender, but Magoski just that much better as a dribble drive. Now Mason drives to the lane and gets a wide open look. And we've got another one of those battles brewing. Here's the Red or the Devlets though down the court quickly. Low County caught napping a little bit after that layup by Mason. And wide open was Maxson on the assist pass down the court. And now we've got another foul. This will be Magoski. Riding Mason down the left side. Hope Mason now checking in. Kaiser will take a seat. Mosser checking out as Jaeger comes back in for the Devilettes. 39.5 on the first quarter clock. 16-13, the lead for the Devilettes. Here's Mason, tries another three. That one off the mark again. Rebound tipped out, controlled by Jaeger. I see Magoski give a look up there to the scoreboard high above this facility. 20 on the clock. Magoski fires it inside. Jaeger wasn't ready. It was tipped and stolen. Here comes Faith Mason, 10 on the clock. Right wing Mealy back out to Faith with seven. Back to Mealy. Here's a deep three for Page. Almost banked it in. Gets her own rebound. Puts it up at the buzzer, and it just falls out. Great opportunity at the end. After one, we've got a good battle. Roan County and Ravenswood, 16-13, Devilettes to begin. Primary care is like a bridge, moving you from one side where you need vaccinations, screenings, and medical advice to the other where you receive essential care to remain healthy and active. At Roan General Medical Clinic, our primary care team is here to help you cross that bridge to a healthier life. Rome General Medical Clinic. Our providers are now accepting patients and offer care you can trust close to home. One in the books here from Ravenswood High School. Good start to this one, just as we had a week ago at the Castle. 16-13, Devilettes on top. The lead yo-yoing back and forth throughout that first period, Matt White. Yeah, very good contest so far. Rome County had a little bit of a lead early. You know, just have, got to try to stop that dribble drive penetra penetration, which is so uh, much easier said than done when you're trying to deal with uh, Ratchford and Magoski both. Able to get to the rim, force the action, a couple of fouls on Roan County. You picked up two on Maddie Hall. Ratchford with two, the only major foul trouble for either team. We'll begin second period action. Roan County will send Anatoly, Paige Mealy, Cam Starcher, and the Masons out to the floor. We got Maxson, Ratchford, I'm sorry, Maxson, Magoski, Mosser, Adams, and Jaeger. Magoski with the possession, drives again to the baseline right, misses the layup, long rebound, out of bounds. Last touch by the Devilettes. Well, Magoski has been really strong to that right side, but she's gotten herself a little out of position on those layups. Uh, getting a little bit too far underneath the basket a couple of times, got bailed out with fouls, but... 
that time. Good defense by Roone County. Mason out top, losing the dribble, picks it up, hands it off. The freshman Tolly comes back, and Roan Kenny will reset. Boy, dangerous pass taken by Mason. Faith to the lane, misses on the layup, but someone reaching in. And I believe that will be Maxson. It will be the senior, Samantha Maxson. It'll be her second. Well, you think about how good this Devilette team has been this year, just two seniors. On the roster, they're going to have everybody back next year. So look for them to be more dangerous. And you're most important with Magoski and Ratchford both coming back. That's a, that'll be a fearsome senior duo. Maxson checking out with her second foul. Riley Street back in for the Devilettes. As Mason hit on the first, second coming. Too strong on that one. Street, who just checked in, clears the board. Street was a major factor down the stretch in that last meeting was well, she had four steals all of those coming in the latter part of that ball game maddie hall comes to the scores table set to check in or just a minute going by here in the second adams underneath loses her dribble finds jaeger back out top here comes mcgoski the drive the dish and street misses on the layup but the backside rebound jaeger had great positioning and now Mason swipes it away down the court to Tolly. Anna straight to the lane. Layup is up and good. The steal by Faith on one side and the run out. Now Roan County, a little bit of backcourt pressure just on the inbounds. Mosser quickly to the front court. Hands it off to Magoski. Pull up 18 footer right wing. Swish. Just needed a little screen and got it. And she is a competent shooter from anywhere. Yeah, she's got 11 points out of the 18. There's a screen now for Mason, and she'll pull up from 18. These two stars going at it. 10 already for Faith. Mosser gets it down into the front court, right side corner. Magoski brings it all the way back out top. We'll reset. Two minutes gone by in the second. Well, Roan County is stuck with this man-to-man. -man. They've moved out of it a couple times. Now Tolly got in front of the pass, almost stole it, saved it, but it goes out of bounds. Neely will check out, Hall in. So you got a couple of quick guards up front with Hall and Tolly now. Now you're going to need that if you're playing man-to-man -man defense. So we're going to get the switch up, though. That's going to be Hall guarding Mosser. Got to be oh. careful with... Maddie with those two fouls. Well, and you brought Ratchford in as well in that last play. It'll be Faith Mason on Ratchford. Ratchford getting a screen. Here comes Streets. Little three-guard weave out top. Here's Magoski. Back rims that three-point attempt. But again, this is what they do well, and this is what Roan County does not do well, Matt. Against Ravenswood, they don't get bodies on these girls, and they get out-hustled to those loose ball rebounds. Luckily right there, that loose ball rebound, Ratchford... Lost her footing, but to go down to a knee and was called for the travel. Nearly three minutes going by in the second. We're squared up at 18. This is shades of the first contest last week at the Castle. Both teams playing tremendous basketball. Here's an 18-footer for Starcher. No good. Hope Mason in there for the rebound and the putback. Oh, what a nice job staying with that offensive rebound. Nice second chance bucket there, Hope Mason. There's a kick ball as Ratchard was looking for Street. One of the things about Hope is, Matt, you remember early in the year, she started for Roan County. She started last year a bit. I think she's more of a spark player off the bench for Roan County. She seems to really revel in that coming off the bench kind of mentality. There's a blocked shot now for Faith Mason out to Hall. Maddie goes left, lays it up and in. Good look and take to the basket for Hall. Roan County leading by four now. Well, that's the thing. You get some of those easy run outs and those transition buckets. That time, Hall off of the deflection there. Faith Mason, another steal. Another deflected pass to herself. Mason going to be hit from behind, heading towards the basket. Street, maybe? Mm, I think they're going to get Radford. That's number three. So for the second game in a row, Against Roan County, Ratchford in foul trouble in the first half of play. Seventh team foul for the Devilettes. Two coming for Faith Mason. 
And in comes Samantha Max, and out goes Ratchford once again, who just checked in, Matt, about a minute and a half ago. Very, like I said, very eerie, similar start to that last contest between these two teams. Just got to hope Rome County can hold on to it down the stretch if it one if it of comes to one of two. For Mason, here comes Magoski into the lane, a little out of control. Ball saved in, though, by Jaeger. What a hustle play. Yeah, great play there under the basket by Jaeger. Back out top. Now Magoski guarded by Hope Mason off of all those screens. Bit of a mismatch, but Magoski falls to the floor, keeps the dribble, gives it away, and now the ball deflected out of bounds. How about the defense of the Lady Raiders right now? And they're swarming very well on that perimeter. They're not giving up anything. And after those dribble drive penetrations, that second line of defense is doing a very nice job of standing tall and not letting them get around. Now the ball stolen and saved in bounds by Faith Mason. Hope the first to get to it. Got away with a travel ball stolen anyway. Into the front court. Magoski pulls up from way downtown and ferries it. Wow. He's almost underneath of that auxiliary basket on the side there. That was from the Ravenswood Ripley line. Here's Hope Mason open for a big deep two. Air balls at short though. Now Magoski will jog it across the timeline and slow things down at the 320 mark in the first half. Rome County led by five. That's the largest lead for either team. And stepping on the end line is Mosser. Out of bounds to Roan County. It's good defense again by Maddie Hall moving the feet and just stayed in front of the in front of the offensive player and using that baseline perfectly. Well, Coach Kara Williams will bring Adams back in. Height inside for them. Street checking out. Here's Starcher wide open out top. May have had a foot on the line. Missed it anyway off the back rim. And another loose ball rebound tracked down by Jaeger. It was Jaeger's fifth rebound of the ball game. Nagoski front court. Under three remaining first half action. We've got a good one again here tonight as Magoski. She is really having some trouble with the handles of the ball right now. Well, every time she gets past that first defender, there's two more waiting on her. And they're just swiping at that ball. That time they were lose control of it a little bit. And you know, on the on the recovery was trying to throw it or, or kind of shot put it over to that corner and just lost it. Well, you could see the frustration in Magoski's face. So could Coach Williams. She'll take Magoski out. Here's Tolly on the baseline right. Misses the jumper, rebound. Faith Mason misses the second opportunity. Hope with the third one, she has it blocked. Street into the front court. Left wing, shot blocked for three, gets it back. And she's gonna be called for the travel. Chaotic session right there on the last couple of possessions. But right now, Matt, if you're Rome County, once again, you have Magoski out, Ratchford out. You've got to take at least a little bit of advantage of this if you can. Yeah, the, the depth here for Ravenswood, only eight suiting up. And you got your two top players sitting on the bench right now. We'll see if you can pull away here this last two and a half. We'll get a timeout. Rome County going to talk it over with 240 left in the half. 23-21, Rome County on top. Slay that oh, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, slay that oh. In transmission. Slay that oh, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind, slay that oh. In transmission. Visit Slate Auto and Transmission located at 302 Slate Road, Spencer for all of your car care needs. We offer a wide range of services including transmission work, new tires and alignments with brands like Mastercraft, Cooper and Goodyear, regular and modified state inspections, major and minor vehicle repairs. We also have ASE certified mechanics. We appreciate every one of our customers. Call us today at 304-927-2250 to schedule your next appointment. We are open Monday through Friday. Slate Auto and Transmission, quality repairs by people who care. Well, just as we had a week ago at the Castle, a close first half between Roan County and Ravenswood. This time, it's for an official seventh place in the conference. 23-21, Roan County at the moment, and the biggest lead of the first half, Roan County at five. Yes, yeah, it's been a really 
really close contest exactly what we thought it would be again both these teams very evenly matched we've seen a lot of these young ladies play you know ever since they were in the seventh and eighth grade so it's been a, you know, a good contest hall takes away the screen takes it strong to the hoop out of the break what a move nice little up and under with the scoop like to see her going strong to the basket Long County by four, nearing the two-minute mark. Boy, dangerous pass out top, just taken barely by Maxson. Misses on the 15-footer. Long County clears it. Faith Mason over to Hall. Step in three, right wing. Switch. Hall with five in a row for the Lady Raiders, and the lead is bounced out to seven now. Under two minutes remaining in the first half. Nice couple of possessions there for Roan County on offense. Maddie Hall with the dribble drive, that time with a pull-up jump. Mosser gets by on a crossover, and Hope Mason late to get there. A little body contact for the junior. A little bit of a hip check. And it will be Macy Mosser at the line for two. First on Hope, fifth team foul of the first half. As Mosser misses off the left side, first one, Magoski back in now. Again, she doesn't have foul problems. She was just a little frustrated. So get her out, get her some uh, time to breathe and, and think it over. And that's dangerous because she might be <laughs> uber focused now. Second one good for Mosser. Lady Raiders by six with 140 left in the first half. Oh, a dangerous pass from Hall, lazy pass, and it was tipped away from Starcher. But Hope Mason hustling back, tips it back away. Numbers for Roan County. Starcher pulls up from 12, banks it in. 30 to 22. Great hustle on that last play from Hope Mason. After that lazy pass, chasing it down, getting the possession back, and an easy bucket. That's why I like that they've added deflections as a category because otherwise she would have not gotten credit for that play. The steal would have been Halls. Help defense after Starcher made the bucket. Knocks it out of bounds. She'll get a breather as Mealy back in for Roan County. 104 left. First half action. Ball lobbed out top to Adams. Now Mosser working between the circles. Tipped away, ball on the floor. I think it's going to be Tolly on the foul. I think Tolly got there just a little late and fouling Magoski. That's just the sixth, so no shooting yet. Mosser, sideline inbound, struggling to find somebody, threw it off of Mason, and Faith almost got her hand on it again. <laughs> And a timeout coming here for the Devilettes. 56 on the clock, 30 to 22. Lady Raiders with the lead. Come into Stats Pharmacy where our patient's good health is our main concern. We have a drive through window where you can conveniently drop off and pick up your prescriptions and over-the-counter medications. Refill your prescriptions anytime online at www.statspharmacy.com or from your iPhone or Android phone using the Refill RX mobile app. No waiting in long lines. Just call ahead and your order will be waiting for you. We look forward to serving you at Stats Pharmacy, located at 100 East Main Street in Spencer. You can call us at 304-927-2980. 56 on the clock here in the first half. Roan County by eight. Out of the timeout for the Devilettes. They'll get it inbounds to Hadley Magoski. Thousand point score as of Monday, and she is just a junior, by the way. Yeah. Moss are moving back and forth, having some trouble. Now Magoski gets hip checked on the drive. And it's going to be actually, did they say 24? It'll be Faith Mason. Yeah, a couple of fouls missed there <laughs> on that screen attempt. Yeah, a couple of uh, different... Uh, well, the homestand folks wanted a little excessiveness on Tolly, but well, it'll be time for us to hand out our officials' applications to the entire <laughs> set of stands. Apparently, folks don't know what an illegal screen is either. So, <laughs> as Magoski 
predictably hits both free throws. 35 left here in the first half. Let's see if Rowe County works for the final shot or just goes through their offense. Mason pumps, pulls up, 15-foot jumper short. Rebound underneath, Tolly fighting for it. We got a whistle. And a jump ball. Um, Pierce up. And the possession arrow shows from County. <laughs> wow. Here's Hall off of the inbounds. Jumper too strong. Hall goes down. Look at the save by Tolly inbounds. Anna falling to the ground, saving it. Now she'll attack the rim. Loses the dribble, though. Yeager pulls it away. Ten on the clock. Magoski down the right side. Backs it up with five. To Yeager out top. Mosser with two. And a shot blocked at the end of the half. And that's how the first half will close. Big action and great action on both sides. It's Rhode County by six after two. 30 to 24 is your halftime score. Break the take for our sponsors. When we return, we'll recap the first half, have your statistics. You're watching Lady Raider basketball on WVRC. Oh, what a night. Late December back in 22. Car broke down and then I felt so blue. I remember what a night. We had very cold weather in December of 22. Don't let your car break down on you. Be proactive and keep it in the best shape possible. Check your battery, chassis parts, brakes, alternators, starters, wiper blades, rotors, and filters. Then go to Willard Starters to get the good stuff. Don't break down in the cold. Keep your car running with the quality parts from the professional staff at Willard Starters. Dial 304-927-2520. Willard Starters parts can help keep your car running. Erie Insurance says here's to the grown-ups who move, mortgage, mow, and still bust a move. But does your home insurance still fit? Erie helps you protect the home you've grown into, all at fair prices that are often less than the other guys. So how do you find the right coverage? Magic. Nope. Local independent agents who get to know you like this. Your Erie agent in Spencer is the Ashley Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 304-927-2175. Erie Insurance. This message comes to you courtesy of Brandon Dental Associates, conveniently located on Hospital Drive in Spencer, West Virginia. I recently did some investigative shopping at three local stores in Spencer and found brand name toothbrushes and fluoride toothpaste for a dollar each and dental floss for a dollar twenty-five. That's $3.25 for products that will provide multiple uses toward daily home preventive dental care. That's just pennies a day to brush twice a day and floss once a day. Compared to the current prices of soda pop and energy drinks and coffee drinks, these items are incredibly affordable. Brushing twice a day with a fluoride toothpaste, flossing once a day, and visiting your dentist twice a year can provide a lifetime of good dental health. Phone Brandon Dental at 304-927-2775 for your family's professional dental care. That's Brandon Dental. 304-927-2775. Calhoun Banks is your hometown bank. We've been serving Calhoun and the surrounding areas for over 120 years. We offer many financial and banking services, including commercial, online and mobile banking, mobile wallet, our annual Deals on Wheels loan sale, home and construction loans, and we specialize in land-only loans. With offices in Grantsville, Arnoldsburg, Elizabeth, and Glenville, we are ready to serve the needs of all of our communities. Stop in and see us at one of our four locations today. Visit our website at CalhounBanks.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CalhounBanksWV. Lobby hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Friday lobby hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. drive through open 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturdays, our drive through is open 8.30 a.m. to noon. Equal Opportunity Lender, member FDIC. Carpenter's General Store in Spencer has been saving you money and giving you the best selection in Rome County since 1996. We have an amazing selection of domestic, import, and craft beers, ciders, and wines at the absolute lowest prices anywhere. And if we don't have it, we'll get it for you. 
We have a sporting goods section with all the right fishing gear, locally crafted lures, and live bait. And we also carry a great selection of firearms and ammunition. And once again, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you with the lowest prices guaranteed. We're open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So come see us at 746 Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. It's a convenience store with a whole lot more. Spencer Cash Saver is excited to announce that we are now accepting EBT payments through our online grocery site. Go to shop.spencercashsaver.com, schedule a convenient pickup time, fill your cart, then let us do the shopping for you. Give us a call when you arrive and we'll bring your order right out to your vehicle. The $4.95 pickup fee is waived on orders over $100. So save time and shop online at shop.spencercashsaver.com. Stop by D&D Motors for great deals on used cars. We have an incredibly diverse and continuously growing inventory to choose from with many makes and models at price points that anyone can afford. D&D Service Department also offers oil changes, tire rotations, and other maintenance on your new purchase. Call D&D for your next service appointment. D&D Motors, located at 276 East Main Street in Spencer. Stop in and see Dan or Donna for your super deal today. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon, and closed on Sunday. D&D Motors, call 304-519-2157. Rome County Family Health Care now has flu vaccinations available. People considered high risk for contracting the influenza virus include infants and children, pregnant women, seniors, people with disabilities or certain health conditions, and those who travel. The CDC recommends everyone six months of age and older should receive the vaccine annually. Ask your health care provider for one at your next scheduled visit or stop in anytime. No appointment necessary. Conveniently located behind Walmart, Hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., and Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Rome County Family Health Care, promoting health and wellness for the whole family. Visit the Garden Fresh Market in downtown Spencer. We stock fresh produce arriving daily. Let us create meat and cheese trays or veggie and fruit trays for your next event. Our kitchen is open daily, eat in or carry out, Monday through Saturday, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner with daily specials available. We also sell fresh flower arrangements at Taylor's Floral. The Garden Fresh Market. Give us a call at 304-927-5109 or stop in and see us at 229 Ripley Road in downtown Spencer. And let's go Raiders. And we welcome you back at the half here to Ravenswood High School's Devilette Gymnasium. They call it the Devilette Athletic Center. And we have had a good one so far, just as we did at the Castle last week. Rome County and Ravenswood going toe-to-toe -to -toe in that one. It was a bad ending for Rome County, or else it was a two-point lead. It ended up being a nine-point loss. Right now, Rome County leading by 6, 30-24. The first quarter, the lead seesawed. Rome County took control in the second quarter and did not relinquish the lead but once early. And uh, they actually had it out to... Uh, eight a couple of times and uh, it stands at six right now just what we were hoping for matt would be something similar to the first game with a different outcome how about that yeah it's absolutely what we were hoping for a uh, good contest like i said very evenly matched the rebound margin it was even 13 to 13. roan county three to one in assists moving the ball uh, on a couple of deep passes picking up those uh those helpers Rome County's defense doing a good job, seven to three in steals and block shots, three to two in favor of the Lady Raiders. Uh, good back and forth action, good offense. Both teams playing playing really tough defense on each other. You know, just uh, you want to see this continue throughout this second half. Uh, Rome County, you know, you know, can continue to kind of hold that margin. You did, I thought it, it seemed like we did a pretty good job of keeping Magoski in check. She did finish with 16 points, though. <laughs> That's, yeah, I mean, it just seemed like so, a quiet 16. It, was, it seemed a very quiet 16 because she was getting ruffled there a couple of times, uh, getting into the lane and getting some body contact. But still able to get a couple of shots up, hit a, a, a three from over in Ripley. Yeah. 
Uh, to show and what she can do with the basketball. Like I said, only a junior hitting that thousand point mark uh, earlier this week. You know, for Roan County, it was pretty evenly uh, distributed. You know, Maddie Hall and Faith Mason both leading away with 11 points. Uh, Maddie had a rebound to her credit. Faith, though, with six rebounds. She had three assists, four steals, two block shots. Cam Starcher with four points, two rebounds, and a block shot. Hope Mason, two points, a rebound, a couple of steals. And then Anatoly with two points and one rebound. And uh, Sammy Kaiser and Paige Mealy with a rebound apiece to their credit. Uh, Nagoski, like I said, 16 points. She also had three rebounds. You had Samantha Maxson with four points and a steal. Emily Radford, three points and two rebounds and one assist. And Macy Mosser with a one point, one steal and a block shot. Evelyn Yeager with five rebounds and a steal. Riley Street with a couple of rebounds and Brooklyn Adams with a rebound and a block shot for the Devilettes. Added all up, 30 to 24. Lady Raiders on top. They're going to start the second half. Rome County with the original starting five back in the lineup as well for the Devilettes. And we are ready to go. Ravenswood with possession to begin the second half of play. Roan County leading by six. Magoski immediately works off of a screen for the left wing and a 15-foot jump shot switched for the junior. That was a pretty good closeout, actually, by Cam Starcher. And just Magoski with a, a better shot. Well, Mason worked off a screen from Hall. Now Kaiser drives and dishes. Here's a deep two, and Mealy on the board. Uh, Page hammers that one from just inside the three-point line. But here comes Magoski looking to drive and dish. Maxson into the paint. Back to Magoski in the corner right. Actually, that is Ratchford. Ratchford spins in the lane, misses the layup attempt. Starcher on the attack. Cam throws one up sideways, misses it, and the rebound controlled by Ravenswood. Nagoski takes it from Ratchford in the front court, got under the basket, just out of positioning there. Oh, and the shot blocked finger. by Kaiser. Trying to get that little scoop up underneath. He left it right there in front of Kaiser to poke it out of bounds. Inbound thrown in on the left side baseline to Hadley Nagoski. And the Let's will get it back into the hands of Ratchford. Again, she's got three fouls fouled out in the first game in the early part of the fourth period. But she is the point guard here for the Devilettes. She leads them with four and a half assists per game. Magoski losing the dribble again, and at this time, Maddie Hall with another deflection. Oh, one minute and a half gone by in the third quarter. The only foul trouble for either team was Ratchford, the three. Oh, a beautiful dish inside. The shot missed, but last touched by the Lady Raiders. Ratchford with a great dish inbounds. Yeah, Mosser it. was on the left side. Threw it over the top of the defense. Beautiful setup. I think Mosser may have rushed that one just a little bit. Lagoski goes out to the three-point line right after the handoff and drills it. 32-29, now Mealy trying to answer a three of her own. She can't get to it. Ball on the floor, jump ball, Rome County. It looked like Ravens was going to be able to get to that loose ball. Good job by Maddie Hall diving in there to get that jump ball. Starts are having trouble, lobs it out on the left wing. Mason oh. with the paint, shot swatted, rebound Hall. Here comes Maddie to the paint. Layup high off the glass, and it's good. What a shot as that one hit the top of the backboard and banked in. Way up into the sky on that layup. Now, Ratchford working out top, gets into the lane. Dishes losing the dribble, though, is Maxson. Hall with the steal. You've got three girls in the backcourt. Somebody needs to come help. Mason does. Here comes Faith. Numbers for the Lady Raiders. Right baseline jumper for Mealy off the mark. Faith with the rebound. Uh-oh, and there's Ratchford's goal. <laughs> I don't think Ratchford was prepared for Mason to spin and try to throw that up wildly. She just instinctively reached that hand over and came down with her fourth foul. That will send Faith to the free throw line. 
And immediately Riley Street will check in to replace Ratchford. No, he said, just instinct. Just to reach out there. A good job by Mason to attack. Second for Faith, up and good, two of two. And Roan County's lead expands to seven. They've led by as many as eight. And now Magoski will run the point for the Devilettes. Working on Mason, backing it up. Almost three minutes gone by in the third period. Here comes Magoski down the lane, and Kaiser with a little reach. I don't know if they'll get Sammy or if they'll get Faith on yeah, body. They got Faith with the body, I believe. So on the drive, and that will send Magoski back to the line. She came into the second half with 16. And she has, what, 21 now? Or have I even missed that? <laughs> She's got a lot. Add one to it as she swishes the first free throw. Yeah, 22 now. Make that 23. Yep, second free throw good. Two of two. She remains perfect at the line. Lead is five for Roan County. Mason has it stripped away. Picked up by Starcher out top. The lane goes Mason for the left-handed layup. Here comes Magoski into the front court left. Now Streets over to Mosser. I think Mosser and Starcher got a little tangled up there on that last possession. Mosser gets to the lane, layup high off the glass, rolls off the side. Bone County's rebound, outlet pass to the front court. Paul cannot get to it though. As Starcher overshoots the target just barely, Matt. That would have been a tremendous pass. That yeah, would have had to have been a tremendous pass. That was a tough angle. Inbounds for the Devil. Let's say a timeout. It's coming here. Just a 30 on the board. We'll be right back. Rome Kenny leading 38 31. Looking for someone to move dirt for your next project? Call Halls Excavating at 304-377-3372. We do commercial and residential excavating, so no job is too big or too small. We are a licensed contractor with years of experience. Call us at 304-377-3372. Halls Excavating. We dig West Virginia. We welcome you back to Ravenswood High School, the Devilette Athletic Center, third period action here in the LKC Conference, seventh place game. Again, these two teams far above that normally in a year would be not playing for seventh. But uh, in this year, it's just a brutal schedule to be in the Little Canal Conference. And uh, four and four in the West, Ravenswood, Roan County eight and three in the East. Right now, Roan County has a 38-31 lead match and uh, it's been a, a very physical ball game, getting more physical by the minutes here in the third. Yeah, very physical, very spirited as well. Both of these teams expect nothing less whenever Roan County and Ravenswood gets together. One of the longest standing rivalries probably in the state of West Virginia. Absolutely. 430 left in the third. Magoski running the point again. Ratchford with four fouls. I'm going to work it into the left corner. Here comes Mosser quick to the right side. Layup is good. Strong move by Macy Mosser. It was really nice, soft finish at the basket. Now Mason going straight at the basket. And drawing the contact that time on Maxson. And the microphone is the the first time that's ever happened. As Mason hits the first, the the crowd disagrees, as does Coach Williams, but what I saw there, Matt, was Maxson falling down before Mason even got to him. Yeah, it was a good, in pretty decent position there. Rebound on the second, on a miss by Street. 39-33, Roan County with four minutes left here in the third. Mosser back and forth out top trying to shake Mason. Now Magoski going to attack down the lane. Layup missed. Rebound underneath. Taken by Faith. 
Faith Falls keeps the dribble. Now has it stolen away. Inside, Nagoski loses it. Now Mason back, and now we're going to get a whistle on a foul. And at this point, I don't think the uh, boys and stripes are going to do anything that impresses the Ravens with Faith. Huh? No, absolutely not. That foul, just number two on Mosser with the body contact. Home County possession, three and a half left in the third. Mealy finds Kaiser, full up jumper from 14 feet. Now that's another one for Mosser. Immediately, Mosser turns, and she's headed to the sidelines as Brooklyn Adams set to check back in for Roan County. Kaiser will get a pair of free throws at the 326 mark in the third. First from Sam Amos is strong. Sometimes I can barely hear myself think in this facility right now. It's a loud one. As you mentioned, Matt, very spirited in the stands as well. Kaiser looking to get on the board. Second rims out and Mason over the back. Faith tried to reach those long six-foot arms over top and got a little bit of contact. That's number three, by the way, on Faith. And again, she fouled out at the 319 mark of the ball game last week. Rome County kind of fell apart once that happened. So Faith needs to be careful here with 315 left in the third quarter. There's a pass underneath. That one too strong intended for Magoski. Stolen by Hall. Maddie into the front court. Into the lane. Layup up. Layup. Rims out. Almost dropped it. That was a good move, though, by Hall. It's like a semi, a little bit of a Euro step type move. And it looks like you're getting an extra step, but you're really not. Jaeger from 15 misses. Rebound underneath. Positioning held by Faith Mason. She'll look to attack. Into the front court, crossing over. Throws one up off the rim and it rolls in somehow. What a layup by Faith. Took contact by Jaeger as well. Here comes Street now attacking into the lane and you're going to get a whistle. And I think Starcher, well, first she had a hand on the hip and then a little bit of contact on the layup attempt by Riley Street. And they continue to rain down a barrage of insults to the boys in stripes. Street hits the first. Well, County will bring Tolly and Hope Mason in, and I think that's a smart decision, Matt, right now. Faith with three. You got two and a half left in the third. You don't want her to pick up four. No, you definitely can't afford to lose Faith at this moment of the ball game. As Street hits on two of two. Six-point lead, Roan County, two minutes, 30 seconds left in quarter number three. Hall drives and dishes out top, wide open Mealy. Mm. Hits the front of the rim. Hope Mason, hustle play for the offensive board. Hall going to attack, splits the defenders, layup no good, but a foul coming as well, you had Maxson over there. If that's Maxson, that's going to be number four. It is, so... Samantha Maxson with four, Ratchford with four. And then Mosser with three. And we will see. Well, I don't have it, Matt, number two. I think that might be the Price girl, Katie Price, I believe. Paul rolls the first one around and drops it through. Maxson headed to the bench with her fourth. Two fifteen left in the third. And the second one rims out. Rebound. Hook Mason. Hook Ooh. back is no good, though. And the ball last tipped out of bounds by Roan County. Boy, well, I hope she makes those hustle plays continuously. She's made a, quite a few of them here this evening. What well, a good play by Jaeger there as she was about to get a five-second violation. Throws it off of Mealy's foot. And another timeout coming for Ravenswood. 2-12 left in the third, 42-35, Roan County on top. Did you know Hardman's is now stocking Trex decking? That's right. You don't have to worry with staining your deck anymore with Trex decking. We have three colors in stock to choose from, so you can buy it today and install it tomorrow. Ask about special financing options and enjoy your new deck all summer long. 
Looking to beat the heat and upgrade the inside of your home this summer? Call Rachel and Ripley or Tracy and Spencer about new carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl flooring. Many of these options are in stock and ready for you to take home today. Maybe you want to give your walls their best look? Come in and pick out your new favorite color or have us color match to the one you just can't live without. Our best look paint and primer in one is your only choice for superior quality at an affordable price. Hardman's, our family serving yours since 1907. Back to the action, 2-10 left here in the third quarter. Rome County leading by seven. Out of the timeout for the Devilettes, possession for Ravenswood. Here's Adams driving and dishing, hands it off. Here's McGosky to lane, body contact. And that one almost dropped in, goes high off the glass and hits the front of the rim. But that will send one of the best free throw shooters I've ever seen to the line. McGosky perfect here tonight from the charity stripe. At 16 at the half and continues to roll up points here in this one. And no doubt about that one as well. Like I said, it's almost been a bit of a quiet 24. I mean, Austin connects again. That's nine for nine from the free throw line. Five point Roan County lead. Roan County in the mm. offensive possession. Starcher looking for Maddie Hall on the right side. They'll cross it over left wing. Inside at dump. Tolly looks opposite. Here's Hall stepping in. Swistles the deep two. That was a good play by Tolly with the assist looking opposite. Yeah, just really good ball movement in general in that possession, Drew. Now here comes Katie Price in the ball game. Over to Street, she'll spot up for the left wing three. Back rims, rebound, Price. Shot blocked underneath by Mealy. Page, two around her jump ball. And the possession error will stay with Ravenswood. Good play though by Mealy getting in there and scrapping it up. Inbound, Magoski takes it back immediately. That one hits the top of the backboard. Rebound, Maddie Hall. Maddie racing front court over to Tolly right side. Anna puts it up, misses. Backside rebound cleared away by Starcher. Out top, here's Hall for another opportunity. That one misses. Rebound saved in by Tolly. It's on the floor. Diving after it, we got a jump ball, and that makes that Mealy jump ball so important, Matt. Yeah, it really does. What a save there on the baseline, Anna Tolly. She's a hustler. It, just jumping and throwing it backwards over her head, keeping a play alive. Like I said, that previous jump ball, and now that gives comes back to give Roan County the possession here. 45 seconds to go in the third. And work the perimeter. Uh-oh, this one out of bounds, saved in, but into the hands of Street. Now Price. Now Price double dribbles with it. So close to the steal. And Roan County gets it right back with 38.4 on the clock. Roan County seems ill interested in working for the final shots of quarters. We've seen that all year. They just want to get a good shot. <coughs> Start your left side. She's got a good look there. Squares it up. Misses. Rebound. Mealy again. Hall fires it into the corner. But Maddie took off a little too quick there, Matt. Called for the travel. Well, that's unfortunate. That was a really good offensive rebound there from Paige Mealy. 23 to go here in the third. Rome County with that seven-point lead. Now Tolly with a reach-in foul in the backcourt. And, again, I feel like I've given for once in my life the best nickname. Animated. Animated. Very animated. As Anna is. She is a fireball out on the floor, just a freshman. 21 on the clock. That's just foul number two, by the way, on Tolly. Fifth team foul, both teams with five. Nagoski into the front court. 15 seconds. Nagoski goes to the lane. Nagoski scoop layup, good. Back court, six on the clock. Hall looking in the front court. Mealy rifles it underneath a beautiful pass. And Tolly finishes it off. Mealy with some big plays. At the end of the third period, Roan County leads it by seven with one final quarter to go. We'll be back after these messages. 
Although fall weather is beautiful here in West Virginia, falling leaves and brush piling up can turn your property ugly in a hurry. That's when you call on the pros at Hildra Supply on Arnoldsburg Road. Hildra Supply has a large inventory of Husqvarna chainsaws and Shindawa leaf blowers to tackle your toughest yard work. Visit us on the web at hildrasupply.com, check out our Facebook page at Hildra Oilfield Supply, or stop by and see us at the store located on Route 33 in Spencer. Hildra Supply, a hometown store with hometown ownership and proud supporter of all Roan County athletes we welcome you back to the devil athletic center here at ravenswood high school this has been a great one so far just as it was last week now for roan county that fourth quarter looms large from last week actually the first five minutes were fine and then the last three were not good for roan county and let's see how the fourth quarter shakes out here on the road for roan county leading by seven you know what was good in that third period rebounding Roan County 12 to 2 in that quarter alone 25 to 15 now the margin 6 to 1 in assists 10 to 5 in steals and 5 to 3 in blocked shots all in favor of the Lady Raiders Devilette possession to begin the second half now well, Ratchford back in the ball game a drive and dish Maxson wide open in the corner left and that's one way to start it off for the Devilettes. A wide open Swiss 15 footer. Rome County basketball. Faith Mason checking back in. Pope looking inside. Mealy right in front of the basket. Swiss. Boy, as Page had a great last couple of minutes. Here into the front court. Now Tolly getting back, recovering defensively. Volleyball swats that one out of play. Baseline inbound coming for Ravenswood. Now those role players for Roan have stepped up the last few uh, minutes of that quarter and into this fourth. Mealy, Hope, Mason, and Atali all making some really big plays. A freshman versus junior out top, Nagoski and Tali. Now Ratchford. Again, she's got four fouls. Needs to be careful here in the final 720. Yeah, well, let's work it over to the left wing. Now Nagoski going to attack. Muscles it up, misses, rebound, tipped, controlled by Mason. Now knocked out of bounds by Ravenswood. Tolly with physical defense. You know, may have gotten away with a little body contact on that one, but continuing to play hard. And look at the dish. Beautiful drive and dish by Tolly as Hall right at the basket finishes. Freshman to senior, Roan County by nine, their largest lead of the game. But here comes Ratchford. Drive and dish, wide open three, and that one hits. Ravenswood going nowhere right now as Jaeger buries it from the left corner. Yeah, you definitely not expect this Ravenswood team to give up at all in this one. Hope Mason, elbow right, no good. Rebound saved in, but into the hands of the Devilettes. Magoski looks for Ratchford. And Roan County going to be whistled for the foul. Hall just couldn't slow her progress. Bumped into... Uh, Ratchford underneath, 16 foul on Roan County, just the, the third, sorry, actually, on Hall. And three on Hall and Faith Mason as well. 6.25 left here in the contest. Been a great one for the second straight time these two teams have faced off. Magoski left wing, dribbling over to the right side. Now Ratchford jab steps, moves lot right, throws it up. It's off the rim, almost fell through. And that's number four on Faith Mason. No. No, I was going to say, I think that was Mealy coming across. It was. So the foul whistled on Paige Mealy instead. Yeah, just her second. One plus, actually shooting two now is Ratchford. And she'll knock the first one through. Lead down to five. Ron Kenny just led by nine, which was their largest of the ball game. Second one in as well, down to four. Oh, think back to the game two nights ago. Ron Kenny led by nine coming into the final quarter against Charleston Catholic. Irish eliminated that quickly. Mealy squares up left wing three. Big one for Page. And that calms things for the Lady Raiders. My goodness, Paige Mealy here in this second half. She's made a couple big shots, nice pass. She had a block as well. Driving this again, Ratchford finds Maxson, and she hits another big jumper, this time from the right baseline. And you see the impact that Ratchford has. That's three straight dribble drive assists. 
Now Faith gets by the defenders, straight to the basket, good. Boy, punch, counter punch here to start the fourth. Who's going to throw the big haymaker, though, and connect? Seven-point lead for the Lady Raiders. Nagoski, got to be careful. Again, she can pull the trigger from anywhere on the floor. Inside, Mosser squares it up, misses the layup. Rebound, Paige Mealy again. Here comes Mason. Faith, got to be careful. Gets by the defender and called for a charge. Wow, was that one bad. Oh, man. You hear the crowd, that's the first call he's made right all night. <laughs> it's the first, the first correct one according to the home crowd. Now Cameron Starcher set to check in, and Mason, after the fourth, will check out. 5.06 mark of the game. That last situation, though, if you're Mason, you yeah. have got to just dribble in, pull up, and take the jumper. You can't force it in and leave it into the hands of the official. Here comes Ratchford all the way to the rim, misses on the shot attempt, gets her own rebound, and on the putback, we got a foul coming in was Maxson. Actually, they're not going to get Maxson on that. They'll get Jaeger on the foul. Under five minutes remaining. Uh-oh. The <laughs> official is hurting him. Yeah. You know, and here's the deal, Matt. Matty Hall was turning back to the official saying something and pointing a bit. I don't know if those uh, guys on the front row were saying something to her or not, but the official has just ejected an entire row of Ravenswood fans. <laughs> So a very interesting turn of events here. And we're gonna wait and see as two of them left, but the rest of them have refused so far. So we will just wait. So we're in a holding pattern right now at four minutes and 51 seconds. 55-48 Rome County. And one of the officials has thrown out an entire first row of Ravenswood <laughs> fans. And I believe he's saying we're not starting this game until they're gone. <laughs> Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> well played, Matt White. This is uh, and, you know, I always say this, though, Matt, I really dislike this because this bars an otherwise tremendous oh, game absolutely. between the ladies on the floor who are the important parts of this. Right. It's the five on the floor and the girls on the bench that are important here. And, unfortunately, this makes this, not, this game not about them right now, and it's just annoying as a broadcaster because I'm having a blast watching the game on the floor. Well, just as a fan of basketball in general, you've had to be you know, extremely pleased with the effort, the execution from both of these teams. And it's just been marred by, uh, you know, chaos. <laughs> and the last remaining fan refusing to leave, still talking, trying to get his last words in. <laughs> That's going to change the official's mind, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it always does, right? Fans' opinion always changes the officials' calls, right? Well, we're leftovers here. Uh, ain't that the truth. There's plenty of fans still in the building for the Devilettes. Great game, though. Let's get back to the important things. Mason out top looking for Mealy. We're at 4.30 left. The pass inside tipped away, though, by Magoski. Here comes Mosser over to Maxson. Baseline. Magoski now, lane, layup missed off the rim, rebound, Maxson put back good, and a foul on Rose County. Boy, Maxson has hit a couple of big that shots, was, uh, and now Mosser hits a big one as well. That foul on Hope Mason. Scoreboard shows that's number three on Hope. 
Chance for a three-point play now for Mosser. And the, that one rimmed out. Mason, though, couldn't hold on to the rebound. Big defensive miss for the Lady Raiders. Now shot blocked by Starcher. Down a pass, down to Hall. Matty attacks, layup, miss, though. Rebound out of bounds. And look at Hall underneath on the ground. Did a split from her rear end to avoid being touched by that ball. That keeps it in the hands of Roan County. 4-11 left in the game. This big play after big play from both of these teams. Starcher split up for the right baseline three, and that one was swatted away. Well, she had, a, had the shot for a moment, just waited this a split second too long to pull the trigger. Starcher rifles it all the way out between the circles. Ball comes to take it. Here comes Maddie attacking left side lane. High arcing layup misses. Mason couldn't grab a hold of the loose ball rebound. Here comes Ratchford, front court looking. She's got Mosser, and now starts her recovering. Puts a nice hand in that one. Uh, good job to get the hand up because that was going to be an easy layup. Hustle all over the floor from both sides. Got Ravenswood blocking shots, Roan County deflecting shots. Here comes Magoski. Pulls one up. That one short. Rebound underneath, though, for the Devilettes. Missed second opportunity, though. And Roan County whistled for the foul as Jaeger got the second free throw, or the second opportunity that foul on Paige Mealy. Uh, this is the time that you don't want to see the Devilettes getting second and third opportunities on those offensive boards. No, absolutely. You can't, got to be able to get that ball back. That was a good rebound position. Well, now Coach Tim Ashley will roll the dice with Faith Mason. She's got four fouls at 345 left here in the game. Second coming for Jaeger. That one's short as well. And again, Roan County did not box out. That was just standing right there. Luckily, Hope Mason got a hand in and tied up possession. And Roan County has the arrow. Faith into the front court quickly. Again, Roan County has a five-point lead, Matt. They do not need to rush. No, we don't need to rush any shots. We don't need to rush your offense at all here. Just keep going through the motions of it. See if you can find a good shot. If not, reset it, bring it back out top, do it again. Well, they did not do a good job against Ravens with the first time with this or Charleston Catholic on the last game. Let's see if they do a better job here. Good defense by Mosser again, knocking it out of play. As Street will check in and a timeout coming with 3.18 left. We've got a great one coming here to the finish. 55-50, Roan County will be back. Hi, this is Lisa Simmons inviting you to shop local and come see me at our fully stocked warehouse on the Spreads floor. We're located at 373 East Main Street, Arnoldsburg Road in Spencer. At Honest Spreads, you'll find the latest trends in floor covering. Carpet, vinyl, tile, hardwood, and the very popular luxury vinyl floor. We install everything we sell with the best customer service in town. Financing available, so call me today at 304-927-8082 or check us out on the web. Take a small drive to Big Savings. We welcome you back inside the Devilette Athletic Center. Three minutes and 18 seconds remaining. This has been the bugaboo for Roan County in the last two big losses. Very close loss to Ravenswood last week. Very close loss to Charleston Catholic two nights ago. Can they overcome here in this one? Let's see. Sideline inbound for Roan County. The Devilettes will pick up some pressure here. Tolly lobbing it over top of the defense. Hall awaits, though. Smart decision. Roan County will back it out. Mason now looking to attack. Dishes. Here's a three coming on the right baseline. And a massive shot. Cameron Starcher makes it an eight-point lead. Yes. Here comes Ratchford, though. We'll see, though. You know this Ravenswood team not going to go away. Eight-point lead, certainly not insurmountable with 250 to go. They've got shooters. Ratchford drives and dishes once again. Wide open. Maxson misses on that opportunity. And the outlet pass and starts is stolen. And Hope Mason is going to be called for the foul. Cam was trapped underneath Matt, and I think she got a little bit worried. Turned and tried to throw it quickly. Didn't see Street behind. And Street made a huge play to steal it back. But Starcher with a mammoth three. That gives Rome County the eight-point advantage. Street, though, at the line for two. 
And the sophomore hits good on the first. Two minutes, 41 seconds left. Second four street up and good, two of two. Take two possession lead for the Lady Raiders. Tolly in the backcourt, works to the middle, loses the ball, picks it back up. Over to Mason, we gotta get it out top. Get it back out top, here comes Faith though driving. On top ball for the travel, Matt. This is where Rome County makes these decisions that make your hair gray. Make there the is no gray, reason for Rome County to attack out. there. No reason at all. Just kick that ball back out to the top. Get yourself settled and run your offense. You don't have to run to the basket right now. <laughs> 2.30 left in the game. The lead is six for Rome County. 58-52 off the turnover. Rome County will pick up backcourt pressure. Remember, there's no shot clock in high school basketball. Here comes Ratchford working on the freshman Tolly all the way to the paint, and she will run through Hope Mason. And wow. <laughs> Mason whistle for the foul. This will be number five. And Mason is done. I think the reason she got called for that, Matt, is because at the last second she turned. So she turned more than anything trying to anticipate the fall. Yeah. So Hope is finished, a good night for her. And Sammy Kaiser will check back in for the first time here in quite a while. And back to the line go the Devilettes. It'll be Ratchford for a pair. She hit on her last two. Looking to cut it to four, and she'll cut it down by one. And Rome County now will burn a timeout. 222 left in this one. We got a great finish coming here as Rome County leads at the moment. New, new, new. At Jack Aaron Ford, new work trucks available with Redding Classic 2 detachable service bodies. The highest quality service body in the industry. Check them out today. And remember, Jack Aaron Ford's new and used vehicle prices are the best you'll find. And you can even special order a new Ford. No wonder they've been around for 63 years. Jack Garrett Ford, Ripley Road, Spencer. Two minutes, 22 seconds left in this mammoth game. We've had a great time with it. Both teams showing why they are so good. And a rematch just as good or maybe even better here than the first contest. I didn't think that was possible. One coming here for Ratchford at the line to try to cut it down to four. And she will do that with a swift four-point lead for Roan County. Inbounds back court to Tolly. Tolly finds Mason out top. Faith into the front court. Pulls up from 18 feet. No good. And Matt, I am just Why? bewildered. <laughs> into the front court, Nagoski. Shot blocked though by Starcher. Kaiser with the rebound. Outlet pass. Tipped away. Street couldn't hold on to it. But again, Matt, why? You do not need to shoot the basketball right now yet. Just put the brakes on the brains, please. I would prefer that. I'm not coaching, though. I'm, I'm pretty sure Tim Ashley didn't tell her to take that shot either. Here comes Faith, though, to the front court, crossing over, and we got a whistle. Body contacts. Is it Ratchford? No. No, that's going to be Mosser on, on the foul. Four on Mosser. So Mosser with four, Ratchford with four, Mason at the line, 156. But see, that's what I mentioned. You go, you're going to get to the line, Matt, if you hold on to the basketball, because the longer you run that clock out, the more important it's going to have to be for Ravenswood to foul you. They got away with one there after the big block shot by Cameron Starcher and Kaiser's big rebound. And dare we say, will it come down to free throws again for the third straight time between Roan County Ravenswood, Roan County Charleston Catholic. And now Roan County Ravenswood again as Mason hits the front end. Second for the senior, big two free throws for Faith. Six point lead, here comes Mosser quickly front court. Over to Street, out top. This is the one they want to have it. That's Magoski. Gets off one screen, gets by the next opponent, misses the layup, though. Mason with the rebound. There you go, slow it down. Mason's going to get across the timeline and pump the brakes. 135 left. 
Mason picks it up, fires to Starcher. Cam brings it back out over to uh, Hall. Maddie's going to be fouled now by Magoski. So Maddie will go to the free throw line for one plus the bonus. That is foul number eight on the Devilettes. Just the second on Magoski. 128 left in the game. Hall with the front end of a one plus the bonus. Free throw up, free throw good, big one. It makes it a three possession lead now for Roan County. Second coming for Hall. That one rings in. Rattles home. It's an eight point lead for Roan County. 126 left. Timeout on the board for Coach Kara Williams. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Hey, are you serious? I like a good laugh. I beg you do too. Which is why I say if all those insurance companies want to spend a gazillion dollars on funny TV ads, go right ahead. As long as it's not my money that's paying for it. Here's how you get seriously good auto, home, business, or life insurance. Go to Erie Insurance. With Erie, a great price is just a start. You get unbelievable service, independent agents you can really trust, and superior products like Erie Rate Lock. You hear that? Rate Lock. Name says it all. For car insurance, it can't be beat. But hey, don't just take it from me. See for yourself why more than 90% of Erie customers stay with them year after year after year. Seriously. Your Erie Insurance Agent in Spencer is the Kirby Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 927-2544. That's 927-2544. Or visit kirbyinsurance.com. One minute, 26 seconds remaining in the contest. LKC seventh place game, 62-54. Roan County by eight. Devilettes with possession. The final three minutes of close games have been Roan County's nemesis. One hiccup. Other than that, they've made big plays. Here's Ratchford into the lane. Off the glass. Up and good. And a smart decision by Starcher. Stay away from the foul. You don't want to give him anything extra. Mason into the front court and puts the brakes on. Not a girl. Over on the sideline. And that is going to be a foul on Mosser with the body contact. Number five. So Mosser is done. And we'll see Adams back in for the Devilettes. Good night for Mosser. She played very well here tonight. One minute, 10 seconds left. We're still in the single bonus. One plus for Faith Mason. Yeah, especially defensively for Mosser. Three steals and three block shots. They'll hit a couple of big ones. Well, and Faith has really shaken off that tough night two nights ago against Charleston Catholic. 11 of 19 from the line. She's missed a couple here tonight, but she's been much better. I was going to say I couldn't tie Bosher, but she misses on the second. Here comes Ratchford looking opposite. Tolly comes in and puts it, swipes it away over to Starcher, who makes another big decision. Trapped on the sideline and just throws it off the leg of a defender. How about Anna Tolly? A major play. Again, another big save. One minute left in the game. Mason working against Ratchford. Into the front court, loses the dribble, but Ratchford couldn't hold on either. It goes right back to Starcher. Into the front court, Mason again. Just, just hold the ball. You don't have to attack here. Cam, make him come get up. And someone reached in quickly with 44 seconds left. Well, you cannot understate the hustle play that Tolly just made because you had Magoski wide open to the lane otherwise. Yeah, if she's uh, able to let that ball go out of bounds, it was going to be an easy bucket. Tolly, a big save, and then Starcher doing the smart thing, knocking that ball off the leg. First free throw hits the front of the rim, the backboard, and rolls all the way around before falling out. 44.2 seconds left. Roan County leads by seven. Now Starcher hit a huge three a few minutes ago. We'd love one free throw. Didn't get it now. Tolly over the back and that is exactly what you don't want to see is a possible points put on the board with no time coming off 
But again, if you're taller, you are a hustler, and that's what's She's in trying your, to make, your trying to make every single play, <laughs> and that time the play to make would have been to run away. Yeah, run, <laughs> run away. That'll put Ratchford at the line for two. Both teams now in the double bonus. First free throw good for Ratchford. The lead is down to two possessions. Six-point lead for Roan County. And Ratchford is now six for six on the evening. And she misses on that one, but the long rebound tracked down by Riley Street, and now Roan County's going to foul. What is going on? They had no one in the lane, and nobody from Roan County got the ball. On top of that, you foul, How? and you put Street at the line for two. <laughs> How? The last 40 seconds, Roan County's trying to lose this ball game. it seems. First for Street, that one missing short, though. The tension ratcheting up for everybody on the floor. Nerves will be a thing here. Roan County by six. Street second, too strong. That time, Mason in the lane. Immediately, Magoski reaching in. Just one second goes by. 39.1. Roan County by six. And Faith Mason <laughs> headed to the line. And we thought this one was so close early on in the ball game that it could come down, you know, to a, a tight ball game here. Mason knocking down the first seven-point lead now for the Lady Raiders. 39 seconds left in the ball game. I'll never say another word. She hits both. <laughs> Just sit there with your mouth covered. I'll take care of it. I put my own muzzle on. Lead back to eight. Magoski will let it roll as far as she can. 35 seconds left in the game. Ratchford into the lane. Muscles it up. Misses off the rim. Rebound. Faith Mason again. And Street will foul. 29 seconds left. And it is coming down to free throws as we thought it may. Yeah, free throws and a whole lot of fouls on both teams. Way more than 10 apiece here in this second. That's crazy. Both teams in the double bonus. As crazy as that is, Matt, that's the first on street. Mason hits on the first. 29.3 left. Another nail biter. What would you expect for less from these two teams? Mason makes it double figures for the first time tonight for either side. Magoski will pick it up at three quarter court. 27 seconds left. Magoski shot swatted by Hall. Outlet pass. Tolly puts the brakes on. Big decision by the freshman. Man, has she made some big ones here tonight. Some big yep. plays. Yep. Making an atonement for that last over the back. <laughs> she got that ball, took one look, and said, I'm going to stay right here. Well, there hasn't been a play that uh, Roan Kenny has made wrong that the girl has not repaid with a better play tonight. Top to bottom. Tolly's first hits back iron. Well, that may be the least animated I've seen her. She's focused now. How about that, Matt? 20.7 <laughs> left. And she'll rattle the second one home. 20 left on the clock. Yeager will pick it up at midcourt. Off to Ratchford, attacking. Ratchford in the lane, looking opposite. Street, left wing three, Swiss. It may be too little too late, though. Inbounds out to Hall with seven on the clock. 6.6 .6 to be exact. Big three for Riley Street, the sophomore, but Roan County is still up by eight. And Matty Hall to the line. Tolly wanted in there. She wanted another attempt at an over the back. Hey, she, she's trying to force that possession again. But no need. This Hall hits the first nine-point lead. You know, I can say it confidently now, Matt. Roan County is winning this the line down the stretch. Boy, does that feel good to say. Yeah. They're a team that has struggled to close out some games over the last couple of weeks. Hall misses on the second rebound to Ratchford. Front court street with one on the clock. And the clock is going to run out for the Red Devils. Lady Raiders come into the visitor's home. 
Medevilets Athletic Center, and they pull out seventh place here in the Little Canal Conference. What a great matchup between two very talented teams who quite honestly are way better than playing for seventh place, but that is the Little Canal Conference this year. It is a grind from start to finish. 69 to 60, your final score, Roan County victorious. We'll take a break for our sponsors, come back, recap the ball game, give you some statistics, and you will see Star Trek Auto Parks player of the game after this. Hungry? There's only one place to go to satisfy a hunger that big any time of the day or night. McDonald's in Spencer. Choose from the famous Big Mac, quarter pounder with cheese, add fries and sweet tea, and you've got a meal that can't be beat. Start your day off right with the best breakfast in town. McDonald's in Spencer. Egg McMuffin, sausage egg and cheese biscuit, hot cakes, sausage burrito, add a cup of premium coffee and a hash brown. Great prices every day. McDonald's in Spencer. I'm loving it and so will you. McIntosh Hardware Furniture and Appliances has been servicing Spencer and the surrounding area for over 50 years. McIntosh carries the finest selection of products to bring you the best value for your purchases. We are a full-line furniture, appliance, bedding, and hardware retailer who proudly supply Amana, Frigidaire, Vaughn, Brone, Lazy Boy, Whirlpool, Brown, and Maytag products. Shop local and support local businesses who support local athletes. We offer what the big stores won't, sales, service, delivery, installation, and removal. Call 304-927-2700. Visit us on the web at macintosh.goretailer.com. Check out our Facebook page at Macintosh Hardware Furniture and Appliances or stop by and see us at 204 Market Street in downtown Spencer. You've changed thousands of diapers, cut off hundreds of crusts, played hours of peekaboo and duck duck goose because you'd do anything for your kids. That's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State Farm agent Norman L. Daniels will help make it easy and affordable to help you protect your family, no matter what the future holds. Because for the people you'd do anything for, life insurance could mean everything. Call State Farm agent Norman L. Daniels and Spencer at 304-927-5680 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We welcome you back to the Devilette Athletic Facility here in Ravenswood, West Virginia at Ravenswood High School. And wow, what a barn burner this one was. This was probably even better than the first contest between Roan County and Ravenswood. And it was a battle back and forth. Neither team in the first half of that one led by more than five points. Neither team in this one led by more than five points in the first half. It was a grind in the second half. Both teams point, counterpoint, shot, counter shot. Uh, heavyweight title fight for the second straight time between these two and uh, between Roan County and Ravenswood twice and Roan County and Charleston Catholic. We, we have seen some big performances and what is so nice about this one, Matt, is that down the stretch, Roan County did not get nervous. They did not fold. Although there was a couple of times they got a little bit uh, out of mind, everyone that did something like that made a play to make up for it. And then on top of that, boy, down the stretch, the free throws were falling. And that is a great sign for this Lady Raider team that they, in a road game, in a big situation, a very intense environment, might I add, they were able to settle themselves enough and do the things they needed to do to close out a game against a great team. Yeah, I think that's the, the biggest key for, for this one is getting that monkey off your back and being able to close out one of these really tough, close games. That could have been a big turning point throughout this season as far as standings go uh, for a couple of times if we could have been able to close out the tough ones. We rebounded the ball very well, 34-23, to 12-2 to in that third quarter, which was a, a really big boost. The uh, The defense played very well, 10-7 to in steals and 8-4 to in blocked shots. And ball movement was pretty good for the most part, 10 assists and a 2-5 assist for Ravenswood. Big night down the stretch. Like you said, with the free throws were clutch. Um, Faith Mason, she finished 27 points. She had 13 of those from the free throw line. 13 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals, a couple of block shots. Maddie Hall with 21. She had 6 of those from the free throw stripe. And uh, some big ones down the stretch as well. 3 boards, an assist, 2 steals, and 1 block shot. 
and it was just balanced with the, the all of the role players made a key play at a key moment. Everybody contributed. Cam Starcher had seven points. He had six rebounds, three blocked shots. He had uh, Paige Mealy made some uh, really good rebounds as well. Not always her forte. Did a great job of getting in there. Seven points, five rebounds, an assist, and a blocked shot. Hope Mason, not a great, you know, stat stuffer of a night, but made really, really nice hustle plays. All of the uh, two points, four rebounds, two steals, and one assist. And you had Anatoly made some of the uh, biggest saves uh, from the ball going out of bounds a couple of times. Five rebounds, or I'm sorry, five points, one rebound, and two assists for her. And uh, Sammy Kaiser with a couple of rebounds, a couple steals, a block shot, and an assist. Just an overall, a very good night for the, the Lady Raiders. Everybody chipping in on the action, and uh, everybody can say that they contributed to this win. Um, we, we talked about how the, the high-powered shooter that Magoski is. Uh, she finished 27 points and three rebounds. But Roan County did a pretty good job of limiting, uh, you know, everybody else. Uh, there were some big plays down the stretch. Ratchford had some foul trouble early. Uh, she had three points in the first half. She finished with 10 and hit some big ones from the line down the stretch as well. Uh, Six rebounds and five assists. She had four of those assists in that final period. Was really making it tough. Uh, Samantha Maxson with eight points. Then you had Macy Mosser with five points. She had three steals and three block shots. Riley Street, seven points, three rebounds and two steals. And Evelyn Yeager, three points, seven rebounds and one steal. We're out scoring for the Devilettes. Add it all up, and you've got a 69-60 to 60 victory for your Lady Raiders. Very happy to be joined up high above the court here by Coach Tim Ashley. Boy, we got a lot we could talk about, Coach. Uh, uh, let's talk first, though, about these role players that you had. There was a stretch uh, towards the end of the third period through the first half of the fourth period where Paige Mealy was unbelievable. You had the stretch with Hope Mason right after that for about four minutes. You had Anna Tolley come in and have, uh, again, we, we had, she had a couple saves, but the one at the end where that was going to be a wide-open layup for Magoski, it turned into uh, a deflection, a save inbounds to Cam Starcher, who then made a big decision in throwing it off of a defender out of bounds to keep possession. In the previous games that you guys have not been able to close out against great teams, the, the decision-making wasn't always the best. And I will give I will feel bad about this for Faith because when she took that 18 footer late in the game with about two and a half minutes on the clock, I just went and I said, "Why? Why are you shooting that?" And had it gone in, I'm sure I would have said a different thing. But coach, just uh, all around great effort from your ladies here tonight. They look poised in a very intense environment. This game was really, really intense. We, we talked after Charleston Catholic, you know, and you and I talked up on uh, broadcast afterwards that we played a great three quarters of a game for the last three or four games. And uh, I, I told him yesterday, I said, you know, it's been since our Calhoun game at home since we've really put four quarters together. And I said, we need to go out and put four quarters together. So every quarter I reminded them, you know, hey, that's one great one. Let's go play another one now. And, you know, at, at halftime we reset the score to zero, zero, and you got to go win this half now. And uh, they, they stepped up and played great. Um, you know, Across the board, our hustle was good. Uh, we attacked the boards on rebounds. We uh, did an all right job moving the ball. We, we didn't take a lot of uh, terrible, terrible shots. The one, the one that Faith shot, I mean, as soon as she pulled the trigger on it, I knew that she was like, I shouldn't have shot that shot. So, <laughs> Well, she's her um, own worst critic. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, um, you know, she got in foul trouble for us, and, you know, we had to sit her for a little bit. And when we did, next man up came in. We, we played solid. We didn't fold. We just made shots and took care of the ball and made the passes we need to make. Sometimes, Coach, uh, you get a big offensive night from Maddie Hall. You don't rely on that as what she provides, but tonight she had a big offensive night yeah. uh, with 21. Yeah, she um, she got sick yesterday or Wednesday night at, in the middle of the game and was really kind of disappointed uh, with, with that outcome, and she came in with a whole new attitude today, and even yesterday at practice, you know, we we were a little defeated in our minds after the game on Wednesday, and you know, yesterday we came into practice, 
we talked for about 30 seconds. I said, you know, we're not going to dwell on everything. Um, we know what to do. We just got to go do it. Let's go have a fun day of practice. We just did some fun drills and said, okay, we know how to do it. Let's go do it. So, and they showed up tonight. Well, I, speaking of Ravenswood, I remember years ago when Rowan County just couldn't get over the hump on the boys' side of Ravenswood. Uh, when they finally got that out of the way, they developed a massive amount of confidence that, hey, we can do this. You guys had put together these games, so close games, you just couldn't win the big one down the stretch. And now that monkey is off those girls' backs. They know if they're going into a fourth quarter, whether they're up or down, they can close out a game yeah. now. And it happened at the exact right time it, for you guys. It did. You know, we're, we're, we're peaking at a pretty good time. We've played well the last uh, – like well, we've played three quarters well for the last four games. <laughs> and uh, tonight we put it all together. So now we get uh, – you know, we, we took tomorrow off. Uh, we got all next week off with no games, just practices. And then next Wednesday, we've got Work County coming to Run County High School to, uh, to start our sectionals. And then if we win that one, uh, we're right back here on the next Friday. So, but, but, but we come into it knowing, hey, we can win this game. Yeah. So That's a good thing to know. Yeah, that's, that's a good, a good thing, thing to, know. to know that you can. Well, Coach, appreciate it. Great win here tonight. Uh, congratulates uh, your young ladies for us. We appreciate it. We will do it. Thank you, guys. Coach Tim Ashley, one more break to take. Folks, when we come back, we'll wrap things up with our Player of the Game Award, sponsored by Willitsy Starcher Auto Parts. Oh, what a night. Late December back in 22. Car broke down and then I felt so blue. I remember what a night. We had very cold weather in December of 22. Don't let your car break down on you. Be proactive and keep it in the best shape possible. Check your battery, chassis parts, brakes, alternators, starters, wiper blades, rotors, and filters. Then go to Willard Starchers to get the good stuff. Don't break down in the cold. Keep your car running with the quality parts from the professional staff at Willard Starchers. Dial 304-927-2520. Willard Starchers parts can help keep your car running. We welcome you back inside the Devilette Athletic Center. Final score here in the Little Canal Conference seventh place game. Lady Raiders finally get the monkey off their back. They can win a big game down the stretch. 69 to 60, your final score. This could be a tough one for Matt White. Will it she start your auto parts player of the game award? If you had to narrow it to one, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is going to be a tough, so many plays made by, you know, so many different players, but, uh, I thought the way that uh, Faith Mason down the stretch, you know, settled, calmed the ship instead of, you know, going bowling in a china shop. <laughs> she did a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh, 27 points, 13 rebounds, four assists, four steals, and two block shots. And then you also have to give it to Maddie Hall. Yeah. Uh, 21 points, big down the stretch with free throws, three boards, two steals an assist and a block shot and uh, give credit to everybody else too yeah <laughs> because it was a fantastic team win uh as good of one as i've seen out of these young ladies so uh congratulations faith mason and maddie hall as you heard uh coach tim ashley say they're off next week we will start our sectional tournament action at home at the castle the following wednesday hosting work county high school we'll be there with action for that our next sports broadcast we've got tomorrow off we'll head to work county saturday morning at 10 a.m for the little canal conference wrestling tournament we'll be there for the entire day of action for your own county raiders appreciate you joining us here tonight uh for all of us here at wvrc katie nutter our camera person matt white color commentator and statistician i'm andrew miller have a wonderful night everyone <laughs>